On this special Black Friday edition of Collider Movie Talk, we are talking about a lot of favorites, like favorite moments, and also maybe some of the best gifts we've gotten all year. And hey, why not some favorite favorites? I don't know what that means, but we're going to figure it out on today's show. Hello, everyone. I hope you had a wonderful Thanksgiving. And if you're doing some Black Friday shopping today, or maybe you've already done it, if you got up at the crack of dawn, I hope it went well. I hope you got everything on your wish list. Right now, we're going to have a little fun. And we're going to have a little fun with Darina and Riley. Hey. Boom. Hello, hello. Hi. Hi, so, Ian. How you doing? I love, I love when I get to do shows with Perry. This is like I, my yeah. second show with you. It's very sad. This makes sad. me so happy. Yes. Riley knows that I always love doing shows with him because we've had like a long history of doing yeah. shows together. Perry and I rock the shows together and I've been rocking the shows with per with Darina over on Collider Live. So this is a treat right here. Favorite, favorite for me, for sure. <laughs> so you're done with your list. We're your favorites. Uh, you're my oh, favorites. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. No more lists. Uh, none whatsoever. So Riley's just going to sit here the rest of the show. I'm just going to sit here and I'm stuffed and I'm tired because I ate all the Thanksgiving. Darina, can I say that that's my favorite, favorite of all your t-shirts? Thank you. I'm uh, really enjoying yeah, that. If you guys don't know what this is, is this Cheddar Goblin <laughs> from my favorite movie of the decade, Mandy. By Panos Cosmatos with Nicolas Case. Check it out. If you haven't seen it, it's the best movie I feel ever. like I need a shirt from Mandy. It's really great. Okay, I'm into that. All right, let's get into uh, some of our favorite topics here. So favorite I really, favorites. I really just like sat there and I made a random list. I'm like, what do I, what do I like <laughs> I from know. 2019 that I want to talk about? So the first thing I have for you guys is favorite new show of 2019. Who's got Ooh. something? Just shout it out. Let's get crazy. Well, The Mandalorian. Okay, yeah, that's on. on my list. Nerd. I mean, that's, that's no. yeah, that's an obvious answer for me. But the so. Cheddar Goblin is like Baby Yoda's cousin, by the way. I know. Or that's like so or he's like Bizarro Yoda, kind of so. like the like Frag the Fraggles are Bizarro Muppets. Okay, no, that Ooh. works. I was gonna say maybe during Thanksgiving dinner, you know, when you have that like random relative who you don't want to come over, who's just like cuckoo crazy or something. Yeah, the like, uncle that's, usually. That's Yoda's that totally. That's okay. Yoda. That's Baby Yoda's <laughs> drunk uncle. Like showing up at Thanksgiving. Okay. Like for sure. Yoda, Yoda, baby Yoda on crack. Baby Yoda on crack. Well, baby Yoda, baby Yoda, as we know, is perfect Wait, in every we, single way. Can we cast way. Yoda's Thanksgiving dinner? So it would be Cheddar Goblin, baby Definitely. Yoda. Drunk uncle. We, we is, need Cheddar uh, Goblin. I think we need, we need Gizmo there. Gizmo's for sure. there. Yeah. Wicket, the Ewok. Wicket. Yeah. Wicket can come there. Baby Groot. Brother. Brother to yeah. baby Yoda. Are we I mean? just having a bunch of babies? Then baby Herman from Roger Rabbit. Okay, so we're we're going. Are, we, nice are we going the creature route, or are we going the creature that looks like Yoda route, or are we going the baby route? I think we're at this point. No anything goes. Stuff? Okay, yeah. anything goes. Yeah. Anything so goes. Joker will be there, right, Darina? Obviously. Sure. I yeah, mean, I, I'll like be there. He's just Joker. sitting there. I mean, yeah, it's I'll, fine. I'll totally Have you be ever there. seen the movie Bad Milo? No. You oh, wait a minute. Darina, you would what love is that movie. Yes, so it's, yes. it's a oh movie God. about like a creature that lives up a guy's butt. Oh, that <laughs> but, sounds like my jam. But bad, bad <laughs> Milo, bad, I don't know why. It's so weird. You just leave your like, creature that, movies. You know like, what I mean? That's a Darina movie. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like Bad Milo is totally at this table right now. Bad Milo is, well, he's not at the table. He's somewhere he's else, somewhere, but he'll be yeah. making an appearance after dinner. <laughs> but, we're, we're all probably- well. <laughs> That's our show, folks. Happy we'll Black wrap Friday, it up. everyone. <laughs> this all started with our favorite TV shows. I, geez, I know. All right. I, I, you're still on me, right? Mandalorian for you can sure. Say more, yeah. The Mandalorian for sure, but I have to put it in there. I know it's not necessarily new, but I discovered it and it was season two. But Succession, <gasps> Succession, boy. I'm obsessed. Oh my God, I'm obsessed with this show. Yeah. I am binging it currently. Season two is out there. Uh, we started with season one, obviously, but my How God. How far into it are you? Uh, I think I'm about three episodes into season two. No, no spoilers, but at this point, mm. who like you are team who? We had this conversation last night. Okay. Team Kendall. Yes. Kendall, absolutely. Yes. It is so, it is absolutely, it is, it, it, it's, my God, man. Sometimes it, I just want you, I just want to, I want you to say what's on your mind, dude. I want you to say it and I want you to say it to your dad. Say it to your dad. Logan, you're, Logan, 
you son of a Mark, I've never seen him more excited over a show. He has not stopped talking about it. I yeah, understand yeah. That it's one of those shows. I have the same song, problem though. right so. now. The, Nicholas Bertel is the, uh, oh, my, oh my Lord, it's one of the greatest theme songs in television Nicholas history. Nicholas Bertel is one of my favorite composers, period. Yeah, but if Beale Street it, could talk, like, oh man, God. I think the first time I ever watched Succession, I wasn't fully paying attention to the opening credits, so I missed his name in there, and I was a, I very quickly got obsessed with that theme, and then the second time around, I'm like, duh, of course it's his work. I noticed it right off the bat, and that theme song, it came in, it was an earworm. Mm -hmm. I was like, I don't know if I like this, and then the brilliance of it washed over me okay. on like over and over again. I'm like, I just like. So it's really when so I great. first started watching the show, because my sister had watched it and she had already been caught up for a while, and she tells me she's Team Kendall, and I started watching it and I'm texting her. I'm like, what's wrong? Like, how how can you be Team Kendall? Now I get it. Yeah, I get I, it. I, it's, it, it, it was tough to get there, but there's a lot of, I mean, you know, uh, what's the Culkin? Um, uh, Rory Culkin. Rory Culkin. Right. I, I can't remember his name at the, at the on the top Did of I my just head. Say the wrong Culkin. Wait, is it? No, it's Kieran. It's Kieran Culkin. Kieran Culkin. Kieran Culkin. Kieran Culkin. Kieran Culkin. Kieran Culkin. Well, it's from Scott Pilgrim, right? Yes. yes. Kieran yes, Culkin yes, yes. is also a favorite of mine because he's just he reminds me of like <laughs> I think I said a Rory cousin that we all like, have. Roy. Yeah. Well, Roy. Roy. Roy is, is their last name. Right. Yes. Like so. they are the Roys. <laughs> Also, you just had a bunch of turkey last night, so I know. it's reasonable to miss. Them. Yeah, I'm I'm turkey drunk right now. Yeah, yeah is that so a thing? Am I. Same. <laughs> um, my favorite is it's hard because for sure for months and months and months until recently, I had what we do in the shadows. Oh yeah, oh. I so am, good. I'm obsessed with this show. It's one of the funniest shows I've seen in a while, and I'm a huge fan of the movie. So that's the only reason I saw it, and I like it better than the movie. Like I'm, really? I'm obsessed okay. with that TV show. It's All so right. funny. It There's good. a cameo I don't want to spoil. Uh, Nadja, I, the vampire, the female vampire, I relate to her so much. I'm really obsessed with that show. However, I've kind of been really obsessed over Watchmen lately. Mm. I mean, and yeah. we've been talking about it on Collider Live, mm -hmm. and and you know, with Haley as well on Witching Hour, and trying to dissect it and get all philosophical and existential about it. So really, really I'm waiting good TV. to do the binge. Yeah, I think I, I just it. want to binge watch it. Yeah. Do you haven't seen any of it? I watched the first episode. Okay. I like. I wanted to be a part of that conversation, but then I had to, for work reasons, watch right. so many other things that I didn't have time. Right. Yeah. Yeah, but I'm gonna, gonna get an, back around to that's it. That's gonna be a fun binge for you. What do you need sleep? No. Yeah. <laughs> Who sleeps anymore? Exactly. I certainly don't. Not me. Um, on my list. Um, so I'm gonna end on the one that I feel is like something a little different and something people could watch now. But on my list for real is Russian Doll, Mandalorian, nice. When They See Us, Euphoria, The Boys, and Dead to Me. Mm. But the one I want to tell you guys about right now, because I believe it actually debuts today. What's, okay, I think it debuts today. Is today the 28th? 29th. 29th, okay, it debuted yesterday. You can watch it right now. Uh, I watched the first three episodes of Servant. Oh. The, huh. the oh, M. Night yeah. Shyamalan show. Yeah, yeah. And uh, it's, it's really good. Okay. It's really, really Sweet. good. And how can I, they watch it? I do. It's on uh, Apple TV plus. Okay. I do wish it was bingeable because I think the, uh, I think the topic of the show, the tone of it, and the fact that they're 30 minute episodes would have suited that kind of watching format mm -hmm. very, very well. The first three episodes are available, but then they're going week to week. But oh, okay. it's it's a pretty riveting mystery, and there there's some uh, there's some creepy stuff that happened in the first three episodes. So I highly recommend it if it's of interest to you. Nice. Well, crap, I gotta watch that. Have you guys seen Los Spookies? Because that's another one that surprised me. This, this yeah, you recommended keep that to me that. before. Yeah. It's uh, I think it's the first HBO show in Spanish. I could be wrong, but uh, it's so much fun. It's like a Ghostbusters meets telenovela. But is so, it available on Netflix? I'm not sure. Did I sure. get that wrong? It's an HBO show, so I'm yeah. not sure. Okay. But it's pretty great. I haven't finished it, but so far I love it. Okay. Yeah. I've got to get around to that. All right. Nice. Here is another topic. Favorite oh. movie going experience of 2019. You want to start, Mark? You I know? mean, I think I just had it. And that was when I took my niece to Frozen 2. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, I'm going to go there. It was okay. pretty sappy. She had her head on my shoulder the entire time. Uh, she would whisper things in my ear when things happened. It was it was a time that I, I, I don't get to spend a lot of quality time with my niece. So this was the first time um, that I could remember like actually looking at a child and seeing the wonders of movies and why we love movies, you know, I mean, cause I love, I mean, sure. Avengers Endgame jumped to mind with a, with a huge audience on opening night when I went again and just clapping at all the right moments. And that was fun for me, but seeing, there's nothing like seeing it through 
it reminded me like why I fell in love with movies mm -hmm. is going to the movie theater and to see it through her eyes, even though it was frozen and I enjoyed the hell out of it. Not a movie that I, I would normally go to um, unless I had my niece. Well, actually I would go to frozen, but <laughs> with, with my niece was so much fun. So that's mine. She's still singing into the unknown. She, I I certainly you know am. what I'm going to find? Well, I, 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 we're time traveling right now. So I guess, yes, she is. Okay. I, I'm just assuming <laughs> she is. Yeah. Okay, well, mine is very different, obviously. <laughs> obviously. Uh, <but laughs> so, it's probably know. the yeah. polar opposite. Yeah, yeah. so yeah. you didn't have my niece with you is what no, you're saying. No, or Got Frozen. Yeah. yeah, but uh, no, I, for, the first one that come, that came to mind was actually the Collider screening that we did recently for Knives Out. Mm. Yeah. Because that was just a really fun experience because the entire theater was laughing the whole time and just really enjoying themselves. So that was really fun for me to experience. But And it's also a great movie. Yeah. I loved it. Uh, also, I mean... I think Parasite is my the best movie of the year, but my favorite movie of the year was Jojo Rabbit. Mm. Uh, I rarely cry in movies, and that movie just, I mean, the, I got to see it. It was my first movie at Fantastic Fest, mm. and it was my first experience at Fantastic Fest, so that was that was amazing. And, I mean, that end, what, I don't want to spoil what song they use, but it's one of my favorite artists of all time, so I was totally crying. The entire uh, theater was, you know, laughing, crying throughout the whole movie. It was it, Everybody needs to go see this movie. It's so good. That's up there as one of my favorites of yes. the year. Mm. As far as uh, viewing experiences go, I think I've got three of them here. Crawl is up there because oh. I think that's the movie that got the loudest reaction. I mean, you, you've you seen lots of movies with me. Like I'm, I'm not a very vocal movie goer, right. even if I'm thoroughly enjoying something or I'm scared or something like that. But Crawl, it hits a point. There's a certain point in the movie. You've both seen it, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. There's a certain thing that happens in the middle of a, the movie in like a different room-ish in the crawl space. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Do you know what I'm talking yeah. about? Uh -huh. When that happened, I think like my ass came out of the seat a little. And from that point on, all of a sudden I became like a cheer at the screen, super vocal, rowdy person. And right. the thing is I saw it at a preview screening with one other person in the theater. Oh my and God. The, the two of us were just losing our minds during the movie. So, so, you our actually, minds. so we actually got a loud Perry noise. Yeah, yeah. it was something. Oh, that, that was- I kind of said I missed it. I know, it was <laughs> the, the only other person who experienced it uh, was Jim Vevita from IGN. The oh, two yeah. of us just like by ourselves were seeing this movie, and uh, yeah, we were we were both uh, we were both losing it. I mean, that's a fun movie, man. That just reminds me of like Sam Raimi stuff, right? Yeah. Like it just it just it's we haven't seen like a fun monster movie in a long time, yeah. and I feel like that's that's up there. Definitely ticked that box. The other two quickly were uh, Pet Cemetery, just because you know I didn't really dislike La Llorona, but I was a little bummed about mm. that movie. So I, I you know, bummed. I was feeling like a little low at the end of South by, and then all of a sudden I saw this and Haley can attest to it, but I love Pet Cemetery so much. This is a really disturbing thing to say, given the content of the movie. But when we walked from the Paramount back to our hotel, I was almost, I was almost skipping, right. but I was just so excited <laughs> so that they did a really good adaptation of You're that book. You're so weird. I know, no, it? but I would do the same thing. Look, look, I love the Joker. I mean, I get it. But uh, I'm glad you brought Pet Cemetery up because I got to see it. I think it was a, at Beyond Fest or something like Did that. Did you go there? And, yeah. Uh, it was really funny because there's one really good scare. Um, you know what I'm talking about where where something falls yes. from yes. the... Mm -hmm. What is I that called? The, 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 the dumb food waiter. Dumb thing? waiter, yeah. Yeah. You. yeah, it's like that's my translation from Spanish. I thought you were trying Spanish. not to spoil the moment, but then we just said what it well, was. That one. Well, I mean, the dumb waiter. I, I mean, know. there's going to be a lot of, there could yeah. be a lot of dumb waiters out there yeah. and things that you know that not necessarily have spoilers yeah but everybody in the theater freaked out at that moment oh yeah and my favorite was at the end of the movie this dude behind me just stands up and goes why do people watch these movies <laughs> <laughs> and then he just left so that was pretty great this yeah. isn't frozen too I know, he just walks exactly. out yeah, i would have enjoyed is. that yeah uh, my last thing is britney runs a marathon just because i walked out of that movie like a big mess i had ball throughout the entire third act of the movie and then I left and signed up for the marathon so that's on the that list for sure totally makes the sense it's very sensible judgment mm -hmm. let's go with um a random one right now oh, let's okay. do let's do best gift received and received in 2019 what's the best gift you got all year 
Best gift. Oh, boy. I don't really remember any gifts that I've gotten. I know. I'm trying to remember. That's sad. I mean, mean, like physical gifts, I don't remember because I'm like a purger. I'm not a hoarder. So I don't like, I tell people to not give me gifts, including Christmas and birthday. I just, I just have too many things. So so maybe I'll just say the gift of friendship and be very (laughs) cheesy. Aww. I was gonna say, or gifts you could you could eat or drink. Oh, for Those sure. Are good gifts People too. do buy me mezcal, so that's that okay. makes me very happy. That's, yes. that's up there then. Yeah. I mean, I I'll go with the when we went out of town for Schmo Down. It was mm-hmm. around my birthday, and my fiance bought me dinner, and that was a wonderful gift mm-hmm. because that was one of my favorite meals I've ever had. Wait, wait. Let's mush these two together because best meal is on the list too. So tell, Boom, tell us two about, birds, one stone. Tell us about this meal. What specifically was it? And I'm trying to remember. I wish I could remember the uh, the actual restaurant because it's not. There's nowhere near. We were in Houston. It was a steakhouse, and I had one of the most beautiful steaks with one of the most beautiful lobster tails and a mac and cheese and a Caesar salad Oof. and a bottle of red wine, and it was all taken care of by my lovely fiance who went. Dinner's on me. And I was like, I just, mm, my God, it was so delicious. It was a wonderful gift and a wonderful meal. It was one of the best meals I've ever had. Wait, so now we're talking meals too, or just Yeah, gifts? yeah. Um, quickly you get a to twofer get, for me. Yeah, to get the gift out of the way, it's, I don't know, no one's going to be able to see it because it's not going to focus. But like this little charm I added to my necklace, my parents got it and they gave it to me right after the marathon. And on one side, it says the the date and the other side it says nyc um i lied it doesn't say the date it says nyc 2019 and the other side says 26.2 oh nice oh. Like, nice little thing to have well I think, that's my, I think that's my favorite gift i've received all year you also mm. ran a marathon that's insane that so too you sh- you, it, that's, it really is yes. what's more insane running a marathon or bungee jumping uh i would do neither so i'm not sure would you yeah. i might jump? do bungee I w- jump before marathon running I, I surprised myself the other day when I saw your footage and I said, I think I'd bungee jump. I won't jump out of a plane. No, really? no, no, we'll not jump out I of a plane. I would do that before bungee jump because bungee jumping, you see your death. Whereas yeah. when you're on a plane, you're kind of like Superman, other you could be flying. The other difference is like for the bungee jump, you actually, you are, it's all on you to throw yourself off of that platform. Nope. You know, okay. whereas if you've never done skydiving before, you have to jump tandem. You're so right. you're attached to someone else. So it feels a little all, bit better. It's also another thing to think about with skydiving is the free fall only lasts so long and then you're floating down on, on a parachute. Shoot. Right. The bungee jump is just falling, pure, pure fall All to right. your death. So I, yeah. I, let me amend my answer and say neither then. I'm not doing <laughs> any of this. You have all uh, proven that uh, the humans, if they wanted to fly, they would it's have grown wings. It's so. exhilarating. It's worth it. Yeah. I would recommend it. Okay. I, mean, I don't know. Enough. I might do it for like a charity crowdfund, but not, your, nothing else. What's your favorite meal? And would you bungee jump to have that meal again? Ooh. Oof. Well, I'll always bungee. I, I might bungee jump for the best tacos in the world. Cause I do, as you guys know, I'm a stereotype of myself and I do love tacos. We're <laughs> best tacos in the world. Uh, Mexicali Taco, actually, downtown okay. Los Angeles. Ooh, yeah. okay. okay. Really, really good. Putting it on the list. Yeah, uh, but uh, I have to think about my recent trip to New Orleans, which I this was my first time there, and I felt right at home because they really like vampires and witches and voodoo, so that was really cool. But I think all their food is made out of voodoo because the beignets are amazing, mm-hmm. and I usually, I'm not a dessert person, and I ate like 20 of them in two days. So That's highly awesome. recommend. Oh, God. Okay. Now I'm hungry. That's Again. a good one. <laughs> Turkey so, tacos. This mm. wasn't my pick, but this is this is such a me thing to do, but it really was a very memorable meal. When I went to New Orleans mm-hmm. for the Overlook Film Festival, I was with um I was with uh, Matt Donato and Alicia Grasso, both of uh, which have been on uh, Collider Movie Talk. But you know Matt's like a foodie. Oh, yeah. So he, he literally re- replied to my <laughs> New Orleans tweet with photos of food. Probably the food we had yeah. on that trip. So the first day we were there, he wanted to go to a very specific place for lunch and it had it had these beautiful po' boys right. and they get oh. like all this, they get like these elaborate sandwiches mm-hmm. and do you know what I order? What? <laughs> I ordered a peanut butter and jelly. <gasps> but, was it amazing? Perry, come on. But, but it was, it was it amazing? All, it was all homemade. Um. It, was, it was homemade pecan butter Ooh. and fresh jams on like, bread that was baked in the shop. It was hands down one of the best PBJ type sandwiches right. I've ever had in my life. I'm All very right. jealous and I guess I gotta go back but to get one. You know, like they're they're eating traditional 
cuisine yeah. and I'm eating that. Uh, my real answer though is when I went and I got pizza with Haley on Yom Kippur to break my fast. So <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't see, it's You're not like, really I'm starving. This it's pizza's not really delicious. the way to do it, but I had to go see a uh, a two o'clock movie and then the two of us had to go to something like a like a seven o'clock movie. So that was right during breakfast right. time and just picked a pizza place near the second movie and and it was the best pizza ever. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I'm sure. <laughs> no, I get I it. love that feeling. I like when you're so hungry and you get pizza. Oh, yeah. I had yeah. a, a surgery and I couldn't eat for like a week, like, cause I had so much pain in my throat and I had easy Mac, like Mac and cheese and it was delicious. And, mm -hmm. and I taste it now and it's so gross. So, oh, no. so I get it. It's very sad. Yeah. Oh. That's yeah. yeah, that's like, I'm stressed about that, about not eating for yeah. what, what were you able to eat during that period? Well, I had where a, do you get sustenance from? Um, like ice and like no and cereal, I guess. Oh, no. Yeah, it was, it was not a good time, mm. but, okay. but that mac and cheese was good. Yeah. yeah. As long as there was something good yeah, at, the, exactly. at the end of the road. <laughs> yeah, no. All right. Next up here, favorite trip out of town. I'll just say Cabo really quickly because I got to bungee jump. It's that simple. The Jumanji trip. Yeah. Mark. I mean, obviously wine tasting. Uh, I went, uh, you know, two times this year, uh, back in February, but uh, the, the 4th of July weekend, a bunch of us went to, up to Solving. We did the sideways tour. We drank mm. wine in all the sideways locations. That was fun. Good wine. I figured I should have guessed that you would have done wine tasting. Duh, come on. I think that's your answer every year. It is. And and that's all of that's any that's I only go wine tasting. I can't do anything else. I don't have any time, I guess. So it's just you know, solving from Burbank is only about two hours away and you're in beautiful wine country. I highly recommend it. Anybody in LA, even San Diego, you got a time. You can just drive up the coast. Boom. Wine tasting all over the place. Beautiful windmills and solving, you know, it's like you got the windmill in, you got the, you, you know, the, the Swedish bakeries, you know, you can get all that good food and then you just drive five minutes up the road and you're in wine country. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. this is making me think we missed the Burbank Beer Festival this Apparently, year. Apparently, because last year's was so good. It Why was did too we do good. that? Um, where do we find <laughs> another one to go I know. to? I'll find one. It's okay. LA. Yeah, I'll find one. you set that up. Um, <laughs> speaking of trips, I guess um, I can think of at the top of my list was a Star Wars celebration mm. in Chicago. Yeah, That's Chicago a good was fun. Call. Because that was really fun. There's so many awesome things that happened in that trip. Uh, it was uh, Mark Ellis. Uh, taped his special mm -hmm. and yep. that was just really cool for uh, most of us to be there and support yep. him and, and, and watch him record it and obviously see, you know, uh, Thad and, and uh, Cody, Christian, everybody help out and production staff. That was really cool. Um, and also I got to meet so many Collider fans mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. there and, and especially a lot of uh, my people <laughs> that came up to me and they're like, thanks for like, you know, representing us. And I'm like, oh no, like I can't, I don't put that on me. I don't want to, I'm like, dumb. I don't want to represent you guys. <laughs> so, you, you but Quiet. You're talking about my friend, but everyone was so nice and and just really sweet and very kind and uh, so th I really loved that experience. And then another favorite part of that trip is I took one day where people kept going to the convention and I'm like I'm done with the convention, so I'm gonna take my day to go to the Chicago Art Institute. And That's I did awesome. my Ferris Bueller Aww. tour and I just spent the whole day there by myself with my headphones. It was amazing. You did that trip right. I really did. Yeah, yeah we, really nice answer. We did the uh, the river cruise. And that was a lot of fun. Have you did where you the see a river cruise? Yeah, you go in the in a boat and you just go down the river and all the you know all the buildings and they show you the architecture Ooh. and everything. It was really fun. Yeah. <laughs> well, what, thanks for the invite, Mark. I think I did yeah. the walk mm -hmm. from the hotel to the convention center and back again, and that was it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, we took some time. Yeah, I it was think, fun. Yeah, thank, the thank, thanks for letting us know about the river cruise. Yeah. Yeah. You know what? Yeah. I had no idea. You know who? T it's like somebody planned this. I just showed up. I don't know where you were, Darina. You didn't get the 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 smoke signals. I wasn't answering. Didn't my answer my we didn't answer the text. Yeah, happened. you're probably at the museum yeah. or the convention yeah. or I don't know, I'm just giving eating you hot dogs or something. Care. Probably. I'm sure I was eating. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> what do we have left here? Oh, we did fa we did favorite meal. I want to throw one fa more favorite meal. If uh, you guys ever go to Toronto, you have to go to Sweet Jesus. What's, that's what's that's that? become a regular thing for the Collider crew at TIFF. So mm -hmm. Matt, Adam, and Steve, we did this uh, this year and the last time I was there. It's an ice cream shop that's oh, dead center in the heart of right. you know TIFF and the theaters. And I'm it's, listening. It's soft serve ice cream. The ice cream itself is phenomenal. But then on top of that, they take the soft serve cones and they they dip it. 
it and they have mm. uh mm. you know all different assortments of uh concoctions there but it's so good i love how much we're talking about food in this episode I'm because so, we're so hungry I'm for so thanksgiving hungry. dinner and this movie <laughs> talk no is idea. really awesome we're talking about food on movie talk welcome to collider <laughs> food talk we're getting yeah. to like the mushy gushy ones so okay. first your favorite collider video of That's 2019 so easy for me Ooh, is and it? that is uh when we took our friend Josh McCuga to Universal Studios uh, Halloween Horror Nights. I had so much fun. It's one of, I've been going to these Halloween events in LA for years and that's just top experience. It was it was so great. We, we, it's something co the Collider Live crew got to do together mm -hmm. before Christian left. So yep. it was like a fun family thing to do. Uh, Frank did an amazing job, you know, obviously capturing these moments and editing. And Josh was just, I've never seen him so sweaty. And, and it was a, a, quite the experience. Right, Mark? Yeah, yeah, you took mine. That was it. <laughs> Hands yeah. down the best. And uh, the real reason Josh McCuga left was not because of any uh, great <laughs> job that he booked or anything. Him. He actually left because we scared him to death. Yes. So, uh, <laughs> God right, bless B. you, Josh McCuga. <laughs> <laughs> it was. It was it, for everything Darina said, uh, the camaraderie, the fact that it was the crew, that we were all very comfortable having fun. Uh, we had Katie Sackhoff join us, which yep. was a lot of fun. Uh, my fiance got to join us as well. So that was so much fun. And just to see the mazes and uh, just the laughs and, you know, just watching Josh McCuga and like literally use people that have never met us as human <laughs> shields. That in itself is worth the admission Hands down, so much fun. Uh, yeah, being, I think my favorite moment though was uh, sporadically him being like carrying me. Oh, he picked you up in the us as made. A shield. Yeah, no, the, the, the human shield was huge for him. Yeah. He used you many times. He used me at least once. Uh, and he used that, 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 that poor man that was just walking down the street, you know, drinking oh, a beer. No. It was. Yeah. <laughs> I can't believe that's a thing. I never realized that people did that. I never realized how afraid of mazes like that my sister is oh. until I, I went with her. I think it was last year. And the very first maze we went into was Halloween four. And she flat, like out of nowhere, she just grabbed me mm -hmm. and put me in front of her. I'm like, oh, this is what would happen during a zombie yeah. apocalypse or any kind of disaster for that matter. You would just sacrifice me. Oh yeah, yeah. it's like <laughs> it's like these humans that turn into cats and yeah. then just grab onto you and don't let go. Oh, God. That's basically that is what exactly happened. exactly what she is. Yeah. Now, I want to hear like more about- She's like your second Dewey. <laughs> oh, no. I, I want to hear more about this Halloween 4 maze. We're talking Return of Michael Myers? Oh, yeah. Halloween 4? That's fantastic. Yeah, yeah it was that, really cool. Because right. I'm forgetting what section they turned that into this year. Um, a Rob Zombie film. What was the Rob Zombie uh, maze? House of a Thousand Cor Corpses. It was in that same spot. Right. Yeah. Oh, okay. I think yeah, my favorite maze it. this year was Killer Clowns from Outer Space. Though. That was so fun. I love yeah. Oh my God. That I love that movie so much. That was another favorite memory from that trip because we I didn't know that Wendy's terrified of clowns. And so yeah. we, we actually, that. we were Poor horrible Wendy. people yeah. and peer pressured her and she made it and then she cried at the end. <gasps> but oh, no. I had fun. I would have felt so bad. We did. <laughs> we did. Walking away, we went. Especially because it's Wendy. Not good because it's Wendy. Yeah, yeah. yeah so. um, my favorite video. My favorite video is a video series, and it's Ladies' Night. The yeah. fact that we rebranded that this year and it's turned into a long form interview show. It's just it's perfect. Yeah, like that's that's my favorite type of content to For make, sure. and I, I think I could do that all day. Just sit down with someone and talk about their craft and the things. That they're passionate about and what drove them to join the industry mm -hmm. and the new movies that they make. And I don't know, between like Linda Hamilton, Mary Elizabeth say. Winstead, Jillian Bell, it's just, they've been such wonderful conversations. It's just, you know, if I ever wake up in the morning and I'm bummed about, you know, some negative movie news or something like that, sometimes I'll think back to an episode of Ladies Night and how passionate these women are about their craft and the good they're doing for their industry. And all of a sudden I'm, you know, I'm full and happy and, I don't know. I'm just so thankful that that's what that series became. Nice. Yeah, you got to get Florence Pugh on there because we all love her. Yeah. One, I, I'm, I'm working on it. I'm okay. working on it. And if Florence Pugh is out there watching the show for a reason that I can't think of right now, the door is wide open. We Please come love join you. us. Yes. We love you, Florence. Midsummer is one of my favorite movies of the year. Tag her on Twitter right now. Come on. <laughs> yeah. Send her this send, video. Send this around. We're going to, we'll hopefully make it happen in the near future. We do yeah. have good guests lined up for the show, though, that I'm very excited about. One more memorable uh, moment question right now, and then we're going to take some uh, Twitter questions that we collected so stay tuned for that but this last one is just your most memorable moment of 2019 do not feel the pressure to stick to one because i know you both have wonderful things in your lives 
Um, oh, whew, I guess the probably Collider 2.0, Collider Live 2.0. Yeah. Um, I think uh, it's it was, you know, we knew Christian was eventually going to leave uh, to do Schmodown and to do his thing. So I knew it was coming, you know, f a few months ago. But, uh, but I didn't really... As I've said this on Collider Live, I wasn't, uh, I didn't move to LA to be an on-camera person. And so it's been weird to, you know, start with talks at Google last year and now end up in this space because I was friends with you guys before you guys were my coworkers, right? right? right. So I, I really appreciate the fact that uh, you come into a space mm -hmm. where people are just really passionate and nerdy people that I love hanging out with. And now I get to work with you guys every day. And the fact that, uh, you know, uh, Mark Fernandez, uh, you know, accepted me and Roxy being the hosts and, and, and keeping with Mark Riley and Cody and everybody. I love the team so much. It's just, it's made me really happy to, to be on that show with you guys. So yeah, yeah. it's cheesy, but it's true. Yeah. I share in that che sentiment. Jesus I mean, welcome in this segment. Yeah, I, lo I, I love producing that show with you guys and being on there. So uh, I echo those sentiments. Um, I have a little bit of a different one. It's a little bit more cheesy, a little bit more uh, heartfelt. But um, a lot of the fans who support me on Patreon, you you know who you are and what you do. And uh, you're the reason that I was able to sign on the dotted line and lock my wedding in because that support mm -hmm. finally led to that moment where my fiance and I went, we can actually do this. And we got the, like a dream venue. And that was really thanks to the Patreon and uh, to the supporters that I have. So that was my most memorable and favorite because it just to see like my fiance's face, knowing where we're getting married, where, what, how it's going to be, the friends that we're going to be able to have, the family and all that. Wow. That was a great moment because it was also a lot of like, whew, did it finally. Thank you. So thank you to all my Patreon supporters. You know who you are. I love Cannot that. wait to drink wine at your wedding. Oh my God. There's yeah. going to be wine and beer. Both <laughs> of you. You covered yeah. um i'll throw out three quick ones uh bungee jump obviously it was Definitely. on my bucket list forever and ever and i'll tell you after you do something like that like i felt like i was just like floating throughout the jumanji jump. i don't know yeah. i just felt so good after that for whatever reason uh the marathon same thing uh the fact that after all that training the day went so well my family was there it's easily one of my proudest accomplishments in my entire life so that was super cool and the last one is hosting that cobra kai panel at san diego yeah. Comic -Con. Oh, yeah. i was very happy that it went very well but i think the thing that made it extra special and right like allowed me to really soak in how well it went was the fact that Dorian, Thad and Haley were with me. And you know, when something's like super important to you and you know, you could feel it and enjoy it, but when people around you mm -hmm. are so supportive and so genuinely excited for something that just like, that's, that's what they were. Mm -hmm. And I don't know, I'll just, I'll never forget seeing them immediately after the panel was over and walking. Like I remember specifically where we were standing and they were just, like, they were so happy That's right. awesome. and I don't know. It's just like that happiness. I will, I will hold on to that for the rest of my life. It meant the world to That's me to have them there. Good nerd that. energy yeah. is what I love. It really, it really, they, they made that day so special. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Before we move on to Twitter questions, we've got some stuff to tell you about. We've got some really cool FYC Arclight screenings coming up that you need to know about. Like for example, this one on the screen right now, this one that we're doing for Joker, where we'll have a Q&A with the cinematographer. You could find out how to get tickets to this screening on Tuesday, December 3rd on Collider.com right now. And if this one doesn't work for your schedule, don't worry, we've got another one with Dexter Fletcher, Taryn Egerton, and Jamie Bell for Rocket Man. This one's happening on Saturday, December 7th. You can find the information for this one on collider.com as well, but no, the FYC crew is going to be there for these events. So come hang with us and celebrate some movies. Hope to see you there. All right. Twitter questions. Let's get, let's get two of these in here. All right. I know you love scores, so I, I wanted this one for you. Uh, Wally on Twitter, who goes by the handle, the under Wally is asking what original song has been your favorite of the year? What stands the better chance at the Oscars? I think that question might've been cut off. So what original song has been your favorite of the year? Um, you know, it's, it's interesting because I was looking at the Grammy nominations and usually, uh, the Grammys are a little late when it comes to soundtracks. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. like they had uh, a Star Is Born on on their uh, shell or whatever, and right. then they had uh, my favorite score of last year, which was uh, Tom York's Suspiria. Yes. Mm. Um, so that's the Suspirium, the actual song, the, the one of the first few tracks on that uh, CD, or I call it a CD because I'm old. Um, on that album on Spotify is like my top 
2018 listen. So, uh, but this year, what's weird is I haven't really liked a lot of songs. The the first thing that came to mind was uh, the tethered remix huh. of uh, I Got Five huh. on it from us. <laughs> yeah. I, I really love that, that so much. I know it kind of doesn't count because it's not a new song, but that whole, I mean, the score itself to that movie is amazing. So I was very happy with that remix. You know, the song that plays at the very end of us. Yes. They're using it in an Apple commercial right now. And every single time it comes on the screen, I'm like, not right. I know. It's supposed to have a sinister tone to it now. Agreed. But yeah, other than that, for Oscar contenders, I mean, I, I'm not sure other than the Disney stuff, which I'm not as into like, you know, Frozen 2, Lion King, maybe. I guess there's the new song uh, for Rocket Man. Uh, mm. that uh, Elton John and Taron Egerton sing. I think, it, what's it called? It's uh, I'm Gonna Love Me Again. But mm, other than that, right. there's not a lot. Can, can the bathroom dance song from Joker count? I know. That's I, my favorite song of the year. I, I was really struggling to try to figure out a song because there has been a lot of the, you know, the, the Disney remakes. So right. the, the songs that we're hearing again, mm -hmm. new recordings, they're not new. No. I mean, you know, what stands out to me is Speechless and Aladdin. That's a great song. I, I did enjoy like it. I feel like that would have been a shoo in had that song been incorporated in the movie better yeah and it, like and it really wasn't but chances. you know i mean this is all a moot point frozen 2 is going to win the oscar oh I my mean, god that, that song unknown. is beautiful and and i will i will i will say that it is catchy and i enjoyed it with my niece but uh my answer is the score for joker that's just everything. That is like the best, some of the best music in a movie I've, I've, I've heard in a long time. I know it's, it's not the answer, but I'm making it my answer. Well, and that actually, because we were talking about memorable moments, I specifically mentioned the bathroom dance track from that movie because yes. I didn't know what to expect from this movie because I, I had a lot of anticipation being uh, fascinated by this character my whole life, but also all the annoying conversation behind the, the movie. Yeah, before, before people it, saw it. Mm -hmm. Exactly, because yeah. that's what people do. Mm -hmm. um, so when the movie started, I was not, I was kind of nervous, you know, I was trying to like lower my expectations and, and I wasn't sure if I liked it. And that scene where he starts dancing after that horrible thing happens with those rich douchebags. Yes. <laughs> um, but, uh, and, and he just starts moving slowly and the cello comes in. And I felt like the cello represented the character of the Joker with an Arthur coming out. Yeah. Ooh. I just, I literally, I, super nerdy moment. I started tearing up. Yeah. Yeah. I need yeah. to, I, I need yet another watch of Joker in my life right now. I really think you do. The second yeah. time I watched it, I even, I liked it even more. I kept meaning to go back to the theater and see it again. And it kept getting away from me. But now yeah. that it's award season, I, I mean, it's, it's a top priority. Yeah. I absolutely have to. Yeah. Um, if you guys have no specific original song suggestions for this Please. question, I, and for other reasons too, I will highly recommend the movie Wild Rose. Oh, that's what really? I keep hearing. Hands okay. down, one of the best performances I've seen all year. If I was in control of the Oscars, I would be giving Jesse Buckley a, a lead nomination without a doubt. But the songs, I actually do think one of the songs, Glasgow has a real shot of getting a nomination this year. I know it's a lot for Neon to push something like that and right. hopefully they do enough, but that is, easily one of the best songs of the year. It's been on my running playlist ever since oh, wow. I first saw the movie, but I don't know, just like, she's got a beautiful voice. The mm -hmm. story is so great. And that song is the culmination of the movie. So I think if you are a voter who factors in how that song makes you feel mm -hmm. when it plays in the movie, in addition to it just being a really good song. I mean, this this move, this song in particular has both sides covered. Okay, oh, cool. So, so I need to check it out. But you know what's not an original song though that I really love the cover this year? Mm. From Dumbo is uh, Baby Mine. Oh. Not just the Arcade yeah. Fire at the end credit uh, cover that they did, but the woman that sings during the movie, I thought it was beautiful. Whatever you think of that uh, movie, it's I think it's, as far as live action Disney goes, it's one of the best uh, music wise. That's a good one too. Yeah. All right, we have one more question and then we're gonna close out this episode and send you into the weekend. This one comes from Planeta Sophia. Uh, Sophia underscore Elena 205. Which Disney character would you choose to go with in a Black Friday sale? 
So who, who's easy. going Black Friday shopping with you? Well, Kylo Ren, because I'm going to need his lightsaber as he chops down or MFers to get out of the way so I can get a Roku or something. Either that or he can, like, force people away. It's it's all across the board. He's got a lightsaber. He's got the force. He's got anger issues. All the things I need to get people out of the way so I can get whatever it is I need. Probably Jedi Fallen Order. I want to get that. A new Roku for the bedroom. I want <laughs> uh, some more DVDs or Blu-rays. Uh, what else do I need? Uh, yeah, so Kylo Ren... I know that, look, get this redemption arc out of here. You are evil for a reason. I need your help this Black Friday. Boom. I you, think, no one, huh? No one, huh? I got you beat. <laughs> oh, <geez. Dumbo? laughs> yeah. oh, no. My favorite Disney princess, which is the alien queen, my favorite xenomorph. Oh, my God. She is a Disney princess. She is now. Disney. Yep. Oh, you're messing with my head right mm -hmm. now. But That's it's true. Right. Ooh, it's true. I'm just Kylo saying. Kylo Ren versus the alien queen. Who wins? Of course. It's Kylo alien Ren. Queen. Are you serious? Lightsabers. No, he'd be so, he'd be whining, and then the xenomorph would just eat him. That thing's coming at him, and he's just gonna go. He's gonna I stop disagree. that. He's gonna stop it. He's gonna take his lightsaber. Could even use the force. Just throw it at it. Force it. Force it. Go boom, 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 boom. Alien queen does. No, she'll just like the, the xenomorph will just talk crap about Darth Vader. And he'll be like, no, he's <laughs> cool, and then the xenomorph will win. Oh man. Riley. Next. All on. right. <laughs> I was thinking about weighing in on that argument. <laughs> I opted not to. Uh, I'm going Hulk because Hulk will just oh, yeah. Hulk smash everybody out of the way. So there will be a nice clear aisle for yep. me to browse and do my shopping. But the other thing I thought of that wasn't a Disney character is what, what's what's the thing called in uh, Fantastic Beast that pockets everything? Oh, oh yeah. Okay. I'd like a, a Niffler companion. Oh. So, you know, by the end when we're walking out of the mall or wherever we're shopping, Thing, all of a sudden the Niffler empties its pockets and it's like, look at all this extra stuff I got you. Yeah. Well, <laughs> the Niffler stealing for all of for you. For stealing for Perry. I like it. Such a Perry answer. I, <laughs> I, want, so perfect. I want a little buddy. If Dewey can't do that for me, let a, let a Niffler, st I, I hope it's called a Niffler now. I hope so Otherwise, too. Otherwise I've said that a, weird word for a, a while. It's a good name. I like it. We're just going to assume it is. I'm sure it's fine. <laughs> all right, guys, we are out of here. I hope you enjoy the rest of your Black Friday. If you're shopping, have a great weekend, especially if you're spending it with family and friends live it up celebrate your loved ones riley darina thank you so much for being here adam in the My booth pleasure. thank you as always for your hard work we will be back with you guys bright and early monday morning for another live episode of movie talk